on in to our first 2020 edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball. I'm your host, Mary Luce Cook. Big Sky Basketball is three weeks into its 2019-2020 conference slate, and the race has been exciting for both the men and women so far. Our guests today include Northern Arizona junior guard Caitlin Malvar, Sacramento State men's head coach Brian Katz, and Coulter Nuanez of Skyline Sports. First, let's take a look at what's been happening in Big Sky women's basketball. The preseason favorite Montana State is off to a hot start three weeks into conference play and are one of two teams with one loss. The Bobcats sit at 5-1 and and are first in the league standings. Montana State's only loss of the conference season came last Thursday to Idaho, 69-68 in double overtime. Speaking of the Vandals, Idaho is the other team with one loss so far with a record of three and one. That loss was at the hands of defending conference champion Portland State. Montana finds themselves in third place after this past week of play. The Lady Grizz went 1-1 one and one over the weekend after picking up a decisive 92-54 victory over Eastern Washington before dropping their Monday game to Portland State 78-65. Two teams are on the rise this season in the conference compared to their projected finish in the preseason polls. Southern Utah was picked to finish 9th in the preseason coaches poll and 10th in the media poll. SUU entered conference play after posting a non-conference record of 7-3. and three. The T-Birds dropped two games two weeks ago to Montana and Montana State but got back on track this week with a 72-65 victory over Idaho State. Southern Utah is 2-2 two and, two and currently tied for fifth and is one of three teams with a 500 record. Picked eighth in both the media and coaches poll was Northern Arizona, but the Lumberjacks currently find themselves as the fourth best team in the league. After starting the conference season off with a tough stint against Montana and Montana State, NAU is now on a three-game winning streak. Last week, the Lumberjacks survived a 114-107 to double overtime battle with Sacramento State. NAU's Caitlin Malvar recorded a triple-double with 17 points, 11 rebounds, and 11 assists. Malvar's triple-double was the first one for a women's basketball player since Portland State's Ashley Bolston on December 1, 2018. Joining us now to talk about her early success is Northern Arizona's redshirt junior, Caitlin Malvar. How are you today, Caitlin? Um, I'm doing really good. Thanks. Absolutely. So you were a young team last year and almost everyone is back along with some important additions. How is this team different than from a year ago? Um, you know, like you said, we are, we're a little bit older. Last year we were really young. Um, so over the last few years, we were able to build our chemistry. You know, my first year here, I redshirted along with JC Bailey and then last year we came back. And then last year, Nina was a red shirt, and then this year we have her. So this year we sort of have pieced everything together, and we've been, um, yeah, we've just been working on it for the last few years, putting pieces together, and now we're all able to play together. Great. So Coach Payne is currently in her third year as the head coach. How has she had an impact on your game as a player? Um, I mean, I came to Northern Arizona with her, actually, from – Uh, My last school, she was the head coach at University of Puget Sound, which is where I played my freshman year. Um, And then when she got the job here, um, she and Coach B um, offered me a scholarship. So I came with them. And since my freshman year of college, um, she's been uh, the best basketball coach I've had, you know. Um, I loved my last school so, so much. So it was – she was a huge part of why I came to Northern Arizona. Well, it's great to hear about her impact on you personally, but what impact would you say that she's had on the team as well? Um, You know, she is, she has a really great winner's mentality. She played at a very high level as well. Um, And I think she instills that into us, 
which is really great. Um, there's a pretty good balance um, from all the coaches. Um, that's them getting hard on us and then them teaching us and then them also um, being role models to us. And so I, it's just, it's a really big family feel here um, on the team. And I think that helps our team chemistry build and then just all of our team coach trust dynamic in general. Absolutely. That's great. So you had a stellar game this past week against Sacramento State. Every player dreams of recording a triple double in a game. What was that like to reach such a milestone? It was it was crazy. I I didn't even know that I had done it until after the game in the locker room when the coaches told me and I was like, What? I didn't even know. Um, it didn't feel like that, um, in the game, but it was awesome. I had a lot of fun. It was an exciting game. Um, my teammates were able to find me when I was in position to score and they knocked down huge shots when I found them. So it was it was a huge team effort and um yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do it without my teammates. So as a team, you have faced some tough competition in non-conference play. How did that help prepare you to handle the grind of the conference season? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, the coaches give us a really tough preseason schedule um, for that reason. Um, They want us to be challenged and face adversity and have some really tough games to grind out, you know. You can't win all of them, but, um, yeah, it does prepare us really well for the season because when we play teams that are two, three times better than our conference opponents, um, and when we win those games, we're able to um, get more Ws in the conference season. Absolutely. So you had a tough start to the conference schedule with Montana and Montana State, but you guys were in both of those games. Now you're on a three-game winning streak. What has been working for the team to start to get on a roll? Yeah, I mean, we were in both of the Montana games, um, and both of those losses, I feel like, didn't come down to things that they did to us. It was just us um, beating ourselves. So I think that's... um, working in our winning streak right now um we are playing together and we're playing hard and not so much playing um not to lose but we're playing to win and it doesn't get any easier as we look ahead on the schedule what's it like to play in a conference like the big sky where any team has a chance to win on any given day you know you said it um it just depends on the night you know who's going to show up who's going to play well that given night um so any win is a big win even if you're playing the number one team or you're playing the 14th team like it doesn't matter so um every single game is a tough one we have to scout really hard we have to practice and prepare and um yeah any win is a good win in this conference absolutely well thank you so much for joining us and for your time good luck in your games this week that has been northern arizona's caitlin malvar Need a hotel for work or just a night away? With over 50 hotels open and more on the way, we want to be your home away from home. My Place Hotels is proud to be the official hotel of the Big Sky Conference. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Basketball. I'm your host, Mary Luce Cook. The 2020 Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball Championships presented by My Place Hotels will be back in Boise, Idaho in March. Visit BigSkyInBoise.com to purchase tickets and get hotel information. The Big Sky Conference will take over Boise March 9th through 14th, and we want to see you there. Now, let's take a look at what's been happening in Big Sky men's basketball. Three teams sit with one loss in conference play as Montana, Northern Colorado, and Southern Utah lead the pack. Montana is off to a league-best 5-1 start behind the play of seniors Saeed Pridget, Kendall Manuel, and Jared Samuelson. The Grizz are coming off a monster 27-point road victory over preseason favorite Eastern Washington while also handing Portland State a 15-point loss. 
Northern Colorado defeated the Grizz two weeks ago to snap their three-game win streak. The Bears, along with Southern Utah, sit at 3-1 and one in Big Sky play. UNC is coming off a one-point road win over Weber State while the Thunderbirds took down Idaho State on the road. Sacramento State is riding a three-game win streak after wins over Northern Arizona and Weber State at home to improve to 3-2 and two in league action. We now welcome in the head coach of the Hornets, Brian Katz. Coach, how are you doing today? Good. I'm Mary Lou, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much, Coach. So you're currently sitting at 10-4 and four on the season, the best start in Sacramento State's Division I era. A crucial part to your team's success has been your defense this season, ranking third in the country in scoring defense. What characteristics does this team possess that puzzles your opponents so much? Well, you know, we're really proud of our defense. We are third in the country in scoring. Day. We're actually seventh in defending in, in field goal percentage defense and third in defending the three and uh, 36th in rebounding. So I think the big thing is connectedness. The guys in our rotation all were here last year. In other words, they're all veteran guys. We don't, we have a rotation of eight and we really, nobody plays other than those eight. When I say that every now and then, uh, a, a guy might, but there's connectedness, there's familiarity, there's understanding of our system, there's understanding of, of each other, there's just all the things that come with an experienced group. And uh, so I think that's where our defense is pretty good. So as you said, your rotation this season is made up of all returners. Talk about your game plan coming into the season, knowing you had such an experienced squad on your hands. Well, you never, you always want, in my opinion, you always want to play, uh, have a veteran group. You you really don't, you don't want to play new guys unless they force you to. Now, we got some new guys that were really good and they forced us to. Uh, for example, Bill and Gary, Mike McKinney came in and started off the bat one as a freshman, one as a sophomore. But you, you would much rather, because they'll be a learning curve with that. They haven't traveled in the big sky. They haven't played Division One basketball. They don't understand the physicality, all of that. But when you have veterans, as we do, it's always an advantage. And so, you know, we knew we knew we had that, and we felt good about it. These guys have played in big sky venues. They've they've done the hard travel. Uh, they understand the league, how tough the league is, how good the teams are. So, all those are advantages with having a veteran group. Absolutely. So senior center and team captain Joshua Patton has played a key role for your team and currently ranks eighth in the Big Sky record books with 172 career blocks. Talk about what he brings to your squad as a captain. Yeah, he's, I always say this is I coach him a 50 year old guy. He's a very old soul, very uh, grounded, very centered. Uh, you know, you think captain, you think uh, boisterous, not really. Uh, only speaks only uh, you know speaks when he has to. Leads a lot by example. When he does speak, it means a lot. Uh, he gives us a real groundedness and steadiness uh, that that really adds to the group and maturity. Again, fifth year guy. Absolutely. So the parity in the Big Sky seems to grow each season. In your opinion, what will it take to finish at the top of the conference this season? I I told people I think it could be five losses. I mean it's. Uh, I, I've always said every year it's, it's a lot of like teams and not a lot of difference between first and, you know, say seventh or eighth. This year is the all time though. I've never seen anything like this. This is the all time most balanced parity I've ever seen in, in our conference. So I'd like to see five losses one it. I really could. And you face a tough road test this weekend at Northern Colorado and Southern Utah. What's key to coming away with two wins? You know, it's, they're both really tough physical teams they really rebound they both play very similar to us i think both games will be a bloodbath just that it'll, it'll just be a uh, a brawl uh we respect both teams how they play uh you know being on the road will make it harder but that's fine you know they got to come here too that's just part of the schedule but you know it'll come down to mental and physical toughness really i, I do believe that on both games Absolutely. Coach, we appreciate you joining us on the show today and best of luck this weekend and throughout the rest of the season. Hey, thanks for having me on, Mary Lou. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. That's Sacramento State coach Brian Katz. 
When we come back, we'll preview the week ahead in the Big Sky Conference. We'll also have a visit from Coulter Nuanez of Skyline Sports. We'll also note where you can find Big Sky games on television this weekend. Stay with us. You're listening to This Week in Big Sky Basketball. Dinner's great. It's one of your top three favorite meals. You just don't want to have to make it. Well, with Jimmy John's, you don't have to. Whether you live in a sandwich delivery zone or head into the store, you can always get a freaky fresh sandwich. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Welcome back to the final segment of this week's episode of This Week in Big Sky Basketball. I'm Mary Luce Cook. The Big Sky Conference airs all of its live stream sporting events on Pluto TV for free, including up to 700 football, men's and women's basketball, volleyball, and selected soccer, softball, and track and field events. Watch online at www.pluto.tv or download the app. All Big Sky basketball games can be seen on Watch Big Sky and Pluto TV. In men's action this week, Northern Colorado and Southern Utah host Sacramento State and Northern Arizona. Weber State and Idaho State square off in Pocatello to begin the week before each team travels to Oregon to face Portland State. Idaho hosts Eastern Washington before traveling to Montana, while EWU travels to Bozeman to meet up with Montana State. On the women's side, Idaho hosts Eastern Washington in a doubleheader with the men. The Vandals then play host to Montana, while Eastern Washington welcomes in Montana State. Northern Arizona and Sacramento State host Southern Utah and Northern Colorado. Idaho State and Weber State square off in Ogden while the Bengals host Portland State to round out the week's action. All right, it's time to welcome in Coulter Nuanez of Skyline Sports. Coulter, how are you today? Wonderful. Very nice uh, to join you guys and welcome to the conference. Thank you so much for being with us today. So three weeks into the women's conference season and Montana State is at the top of the standings. Should we be surprised by that? Well, this has been a year that Montana State's been building towards. Ever since Robin Silver retired at the University of Montana, Trisha Bitford has really taken the reins as the veteran coach in the league, and she's really capitalized on the great atmosphere that is provided by both the Montana schools for women's basketball. And Montana State, they have five seniors. They added Fallon Freeze from North Dakota. She had to sit out last year, but even though she didn't even play in the conference last year, she was still the preseason Big Sky Player of the Year this year. They had Martha Cooter, who transferred in from Seton Hall a few years back. She's a senior as well. And then they have the seniors that have been with the program for all four years, Blair Braxton, Oleana Squires, and Madeline Smith. And so with that sort of veteran leadership, combined with the fact that a lot of the other perennial contenders have lost such veteran leadership, I don't think it's a surprise at all. Coach Binford is the veteran coach in the league right now, and she's got the most veteran team in the league right now. Absolutely. So now Idaho seems to have reloaded after losing the Splash sisters, Michaela Ferenz and Taylor Pierce to graduation. What do you think has the Vandals off and running successfully this season? Well, at this point, nothing that John Newley does surprises me. I think that Coach Newley is uh, the best coach in in the league in terms of in-game stuff, uh, the stuff that they run both in their half-court sets offensively as well as out of timeouts is just tremendous. He's so innovative. Uh, he's not scared to steal from the, the best of the best. I mean, when they had Michaela Ferenz and Taylor Pierce, they were running a lot of stuff, the same actions that the Golden State Warriors run for Steph Curry and, and Clay Thompson. So uh, they're very advanced in everything that they do. But he's also recruited very, very well. And even with two of the most prolific shooters and scorers we've seen in the big sky, they still have quite a bit of talent. I mean, you look at the Clinker sisters, who are really, really tough players. Gina Markson is really capitalizing on her freshman of the year from a year ago. So uh, they're, they're definitely a really solid team that has been even made even better by an excellent head coach. Great. Now, Northern Arizona and Southern Utah seem to be the surprises this year in the conference. Would you agree with that? They are, and I think that you're really starting to see just the, the fact that you have two up-and-coming coaches in Tracy Sanders and, and Lori Payne, uh, Southern Utah and Northern Arizona, respectively. I think both of, the, of those ladies joined the league with um, a lot of 
uh, they're, they're very well respected when they join the league. And now that they've had a year or two under their belts to start to build it, uh, you can see that they're more competitive. And I think it's, it's very interesting because Montana, Montana State, Idaho, you know, even now Portland State with them going to the tournament last year, Northern Colorado, of course, Idaho State, Eastern Washington. I mean, everybody really in the league has been pretty darn solid the last couple of years. So then to add that solidification at Northern Arizona and Southern Utah just makes the league even deeper and, and even more challenging. Right. So going back to Northern Arizona and Southern Utah, what would you say is key to their early success? Well, I, I think that Lori Payne's doing a great job at NAU. I thought that NAU was a team last year that everybody was worried about playing. They were they were really worried about just how many great athletes that Northern Arizona had. Uh, Tarika Shahid is uh, is really a good player, and I think that last year they had so many close games and they just didn't really know how to finish. But now it seems as if they do know how to finish. They're, they're a very balanced team. They got four girls averaging more than nine points per game. So I, I think that they're turning the corner in terms of learning how to win. And I think it's a similar thing going on at Southern Utah. Rebecca Cardenas has been one of my favorite players in the league the last several years. She is all of maybe five foot two, but she plays with so much heart. She is absolutely one of the pestiest defenders in the league, man or woman. And she really gets after it. And it seems like now that she is in her final year, she's really capitalizing on her last opportunity as well. So the emergence of some good players and kind of just turning the corner, learning how to win. Okay. And is there anything else that stands out to you from these first three weeks? Well, I, I was so curious to see the women's league when you lose, honestly, three of the greatest players in the history of the league. I and mean, I've covered the league for 15 years now. There's no question in my mind that Michaela Ferenz and Taylor Pierce are the two greatest shooters that the Big Sky Conference has ever seen. And the numbers bear that out. To watch two young ladies each hit 400-plus career three-pointers, and to watch Michaela Ferenz break what seemed like an unbreakable record in the career scoring record, I, I just thought to believe that specifically Idaho would have such a hard time replacing that sort of production, and they haven't. They've been able to keep it going, which I think is just a testament to the strength of the program that John Newley has built. And then at Northern Colorado, Savannah Smith was also one of the great players that the league has ever seen. And they haven't been able to really refine it as much, but they, they have been competitive. They're 2-2 two and two in league play. But I think it's just the overall depth of the league. I mean, Portland State lost several good players in, in Sidney Riley and Courtney West and Ashley Bolston. So I was just so curious to see in the league how everybody seemed to reload. And it seems as if they had. And – on uh, the other two teams that weren't as veteran the last couple of years were the Montana school. And now they do have the veteran players and that shows up in their records as well. So uh, to me, even though the league lost three headliner stars, they've replaced them just fine. And the league is actually probably more competitive than ever. Absolutely. So it's been a wild start to conference play for Big Sky men's basketball. What would you say are some of the storylines that have stood out to you the most? It's so interesting the way that the men's league and the women's league have paralleled each other the last couple of years because on the men's side, the last couple of years, you've had some of the great players in the league's history as well. I mean, Tyler Hall at Montana State was the all-time league scorer in conference history. Jordan Davis at Northern Colorado would have been, except for that he played at the exact same time as Tyler Hall. You had two of the most prolific scorers ever. But then you also have Montana with their senior class last year. I mean, he had five seniors. Several of them Pac-12 transfers. Those guys went and won 52 games over the last two years, which is the most in the history of the University of Montana. And Montana has some of the great tradition in the league. And so uh, losing all of those headliner-type players, how would everybody react? And I think that everybody in the league feels like it's wide open, but so far you've seen Montana emerge, even though they did lose so much talent, because I just think that they know how to win. But I think that the rest of the league, though, it's going to be an absolute dogfight all the way around. And there are some premier players left, guys that have been standout coming into this year. Guys like Jared Harding at Weber State, guys like Josh Patton at Sac State, guys like Holland Woods at Portland State, and on down the line, Jonah Radabot at Northern Colorado, Harold Frayne at Montana State, Ty Pridget at Montana. But I'm so interested to see who emerges as sort of those secondary stars, the, the number two guy on the team. Because oftentimes, if you're the number one guy, they're going to take you away, especially in league play when people are familiar. Who can rise to the occasion? That's the most fun part about college basketball, is seeing who emerges as the standouts and the stars. And I think right now, 
six games into this thing, you have dozens of guys that could be that guy. So I just think that the feeling out process that's going to happen on the men's side is going to be fascinating to watch as it evolves as well. Absolutely. So now, after a tough non-conference schedule, Montana has been clicking early on in league play. What adjustments have the Grizz made that have helped them turn things around? It's a very interesting question. I'm actually going to write a full feature on this at skylinesportsmt.com, so if people want to check that out, they can check it out awesome. uh, either t- t- this evening or on, on Wednesday. But um, Montana, they have the steadiest point guard in the conference in Ahmad Rory the last couple of years. And Travis DeCure, the head coach, he's a point guard himself. So he likes to run a point guard-oriented attack. And I think Montana was really searching for who that guy could be, whether it was true freshman Josh Vasquez or junior Timmy Falls, who can be spectacular but sometimes volatile. Or what they've done the last couple of games is they put Saeed Pridget, who actually played mostly the four last year, and part of this year, they put him on the ball. And that's helped them spread the floor a lot more. Uh, they are running a lot more high pick and roll stuff offensively, which I think has really spread things out. And I think that they've also seen some of their – young players emerge. I mean, when you lose that talent of a senior class, you're going to have to have young guys step up. And Josh Vasquez has not been making shots like they maybe expected him to, but other than that, he's been very steady. Derek Carter Hollinger has been the breakout player of the, of the league so far this month. He just won Big Sky Conference Player of the Week as a true freshman. So his emergence has been key. And then I think that just the, the hierarchy of leadership, they, they needed to define who their leaders were going to be after losing that talented senior class. And they do have three seniors on this team. And Syed Pridget is a lead-by-example guy. He's not really a vocal guy. But I think the, the team has finally adjusted to that leadership style. And then you've also seen the reemergence of Kendall Manuel, who was one of the great shooters in the league a year ago. He was the newcomer in the league in the big sky after transferring from Oregon State. But he had a horrendous shooting slope to start the year. And part of that was playing, like you mentioned, the challenging non-conference, playing Power 5 teams. But Manuel now this last four weeks, or last four games, excuse me, has really turned the corner. He's shooting 62%. Uh, he, I mean, he last night he had 27 on 11 shots, so his efficiency's through the roof. And I think that Montana, they finally just figured out how to be more patient, and they're really figuring out how to learn. They learned how to play together. I mean, they, they have 41 assists the last two times out. So 20 and 21 assists, those are huge numbers for the grid. And if they play defense like it has been their trademark under Travis DeCure while sharing the ball that efficiently, they're going to be a tough team to stop, especially because they, they do know how – to navigate this league and how to win uh, as they have the last few years. So it'll be a fun team to watch evolve, but I'll say this. In the last 14 days, they've improved as much as any team I've ever covered in, in a two-week span. I think that's a testament to Coach Secure, but also just a testament to the emergence of some of these young players. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Coulter. That is the great Coulter Nuanez of Skyline Sports. Thank you for your time today, Coulter. They yeah, appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. Talk to you soon. Special thanks to our guest today, Northern Arizona junior guard, Caitlin Malvar, Sacramento State men's head coach, Brian Katz, and Skyline Sports, Coulter Nuanez. I'm Mary Luce Cook saying enjoy this week in Big Sky Basketball. Thank you.